So you remember how we were saying yesterday that regardless of what age we are, you know, when we think we're, we're experienced, we think like when we're, when we're graduating from primary school into secondary school that we're kind of we're going to big school and we go to, uh, from then, you know, we're heading into leave and search, you know, or, or I'm all of 18, what do my parents know? And then I go to college and I finish college at 22. Uh, still, a, still a nipper, really, but like, you know, pretty convinced that I've got, you know, I know how the world works. Then you get maybe your first job, your first career, your first promotion, you're heading into 35, 40, maybe kind of 50-ish, you're coming to like the apex of your career and influence and you think you've got everything together. And then a little further down the line, you're, you're retiring at 65, 66, whatever it is, and uh, you look back on your life. And it's just amazing how, how as we look back on things, we all, we're, we're always at the kind of, we're always at the pinnacle of our development, always, because every step you take is a step further than you were beforehand. So as you look back, you think, bless us. You know, if, you're, if you're 50 looking back at a 10-year-old, you think, oh, or a 12-year-old, you think, Ginny, you're so young. If you're 60 looking back at a 50-year-old, oh, you're so young. If you're 80 looking back at a 60-year-old, did you ever get, you know, you know, you know when, you're, when you're talking to people, and uh, depend, depending on their age, right, if you're ever talking about people who passed away, oh, they were fierce young, oh, really, what were they? 86. <laughs> if you're talking to a 94-year-old, you know what I mean? If you're talking to a 94-year-old, oh, sure, look, they were only in the prime of their life. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, no. Whereas if you're talking to a 20-year-old, 20-year-old, think, they think that 30-year-olds are ancient, right? So it's, it's, it's all kind of, depending on our, on our perspective, how, how we see age, experience, and knowledge is very, very different, depending on, on our perspective, where we're coming from. So we imagine now, God's position, God's perspective, as he looks at us, regardless of how much we think we know, regardless of how much experience we think we have, we're only primary school kids, if even in his sight, right? So we always have to be so, so careful, and dare I say, humble, when we are approaching God and when we're approaching mysteries, because we're talking to, or talking about a God who is infinite and eternal, and we're only, we're only getting started, even at 80, 90. We're only getting started in discovering who God is. So we'd be so, so humble approaching all of these mysteries that we don't get ahead of ourselves and start telling God what he can and can't do. So often, all of you parents, all of you who, 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 who have parented children, you know this, uh, this common experience of your children not understanding what you're doing or why you allow certain things. Do you know? So, did you ever want to take the family for a hike? Okay? So, your teenage boy, right, he wants to go ahead and show that he's got kind of all independent and strong. I don't need you to show me directions or anything. I'm going to do this myself. So, he's, he's up the front. He'll be the one kind of trying to lead the pack, even though he doesn't really know where he's going at all. But he wants to be kind of up the front. You know what I mean? I, I'm going to the gym now, you know what I mean? So, I've got like, you know, big legs and everything. Like, right? So, he wants to be up the front. And then you've got like kind of the somewhat younger kind of sassy daughter who's like, oh my goodness, I'm going to like perspire here. You know, I just want to be here, mom. And then you've got like, you know, the, maybe the little son who's like, just like an energizer battery, just wants to run, 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 right? Uh, and of course, but that'll, that'll run out in time. So like 3K into the walk, he's like, run, 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 run. I'm tired. Are we there yet? I'm hungry. I want to go home. And then the, you know, the son of the front is running around the place and the girl is still complaining. And you're there as a parent going, I just wanted to go for a nice family walk. Why is this so hard? <laughs> you know, why? Or you go to the beach, right? And it's all fun and games, right? But you know the way it is in a beach in Ireland, anyway. It's really all fun and games for the first 45 minutes or an hour. And then you realize, my goodness, it's cold. <laughs> all right? And the water is absolutely Baltic and you've got sand everywhere. You take out the sandwiches, you've got sand in the sandwiches. And you've got ice cream, ice cream, you've got sand in the ice cream. And again, the car is destroyed with sand everywhere. And then, ma, and then someone's going to say, some child is invariably, inevitably going to say, Mom, I'm too hot, I'm too cold. Why did you do this to us? Why did you bring us out? At home, we had like PlayStation and Wi-Fi and the comfort of our own home. Why did you do this to us? <laughs> and you're there as a parent going, I'm trying to have a nice family day on the beach. Why is this so hard? <laughs> now, you imagine things from God's perspective. In, in, in this, we've been reading uh, Exodus and uh, Numbers over the last couple of weeks, right? So 
I'm trying to get in, like trying to get into the God's mind as he's under, as, as he's trying to communicate who he is and how he is to his people. They were in slavery. They were in sla- They were in a bad way. Okay, they were now they had food, yes, but they were enslaved. They were not free. And so God works numerous miracles, showing that he's powerful, showing that he loves them, showing that he knows what he's doing. Okay, so everything from the, the, the plagues, and then we've got the pillar of cloud, pillar of fire, guiding them at night, creating a bit of distance and chaos between, between them and the enemy. Then the crossing of the Red Sea. This, and I, I would, look, if I was in the crowd, I probably would have said as well, uh, Moses, we've got a slight problem here. We've got 600 armed chariots behind us. We can't outrun them. We've got a sea in front of us, and we've got no boats, and we've got in around half a million people here. Could you not have planned this a little better? Or, like, so, you know, I, I, I really do understand. I really do understand where they're coming from. It's, it's, it's a bit precarious. Okay, miracle, parting of the Red Sea, and the cross, sea closes on the enemy. Okay, good. So at this point, you would hope that the people would be getting a kind of an understanding that, that, that God is actually fathering them, that he's taking care of them. So they get out into the wilderness, and understandably, okay, uh, it's, it's dry out here. We're, we're moving constantly, so we can't kind of sit down and cultivate. Even if we could, the ground is too dry anyway. So we're hungry. But the, the difficulty here, the, the lesson that, if I'm honest, the lesson that this generation, the generation that were freed from Egypt, the, gener- this le- the lesson that they never learned, they never learned this lesson, is that call out to God and he will provide. It's, it's, it's actually, it's, quite, it's almost saddening when, when you read this. Like they, they never got to know, they never knew their father's heart. Never. And so as soon as there's a problem, kind of like children, rather than saying, Mom, you're great, you're amazing, um, I'm really thirsty, any chance there's a drink there? As opposed to saying, Mom, why do you have to bring us to the beach? Like, there's no food, no ice cream. Ice cream machine is the whole way over there, and I'm thirsty. Right? So you know that kind of spoiled child attitude, sorry. But that kind of spoiled child attitude where as soon as, soon as something goes wrong, it's Mom, you never take care of us. Like, what do you mean? What? What do you mean? Oh, I never take care of Two years, right? Two years. You were in nappies. Day and night, night and day. There I was, cleaning your little popo, right? To make sure that you wouldn't get dirty or anything like that, right? Day, and like you, and now, now suddenly, I don't care because you're thirsty. Give me two minutes, right? You know, so this kind of attitude, as soon as something goes wrong, you don't care, Mom. You don't care. Like, <laughs> Do you not remember anything? Do you not remember how, like three times a day, I sit you down and feed you? And if when you were a baby, I don't know how often it is, you know, every hour, I don't know. Uh, When you were younger, even more often, okay? I've taken care of you every single minute of your existence until now. And now suddenly, just because you're thirsty, you think I've forgotten you. You think uh, I won't take care of you. A theme that goes throughout, throughout the Old Testament, right, is, is, is this beautiful word. Remember Israel. Remember the deeds of the Lord. Remember. Calling to mind the death your son endured for our salvation. Call to mind. Remember what God has done for you. And as soon as there's a problem, don't just suddenly think he's forgotten us. Like, like, as, as parent, parent, the, the relation between parents and children, if, if children suddenly forget, as soon as there's a problem, as soon as the first hurdle comes their way, they look back at their parents and say, you've forgotten us, you, you, you've, you've never, never taken care of me, you've abandoned me. You know, how, how hurtful that is. How hurtful that is. Because I, of course I've taken care of you. And of course I love you. And so they get out into the desert and they complain against they said, we're starving here. And so the Lord, the Lord provides manna, right? This absolutely phenomenal daily miracle of this food appears on the ground. And it, 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 it's sweet. So it's like, even, it's, like, it's like sweets appear on the ground for them every day. So you're hungry, and I'll give you Turkish delight. Every, well, it's not okay. It didn't taste like Turkish delight. But it, something that tastes nice, right? So it, it, didn't just, it didn't just provide something like rice, which is great because you don't die but it's just absolutely tasteless, right? He provides something that not only is nutritious, but actually tastes nice as well. Okay, so you'd imagine, it's fantastic. So God's going to take care of us. 
But then a little while into eating the manna, they're like, oh, we miss meat. Where's the meat? Where's the meat? And they start complaining against Moses. We have no meat here. We're sick of this manna. Right? And, and, and God actually answers them. I mean, my, my reaction might have been slightly different, but I mean, he's, he's patient with them. He's patient with them. And so then he, quail, right? These birds just kind of drop out of the sky. And they eat meat. They have quail. No quail and manna. Awesome. It's like a chicken curry. Or quail curry. All right? So again, the Lord's taking care of the details. Taking care of the details. Not just like, I'll stop you from starving, but I'll actually give you food that's nice. Okay, and then again, today's reading, down in the desert. Now I get it, I get it, they're thirsty, okay? But all of these situations, we can react to them in two ways. Anytime there's a challenge, you've got an option here. A challenge or a cross or a difficulty or any sort of opposition. You have two possible reactions. It can lead you to distrust or it's an opportunity to trust. So it's an opportunity to complain, or it's an opportunity to say, Lord, you will show your power in my life because you always have. It's interesting, I assume, and, and this, this, this is our life and our challenge as well, you know. I was just talking to a lady not, not, not so long ago, like, who's had, who's had a miscarriage, she's had two miscarriages actually in a row. And, and, this is, and she's, she's like, Lord, she's asking me, what, what am I, how am I supposed to take this? And I said, well, look, it's, it's hard. Of course it's hard. Um... You know, you carry this little life for, for however long and then you have to let it go. That's, that's, that's not easy. That's not easy. But we always, always, always look at the Lord's track record. Look at the, the four, four children you all, the beautiful four little children you already have and love them. And the two children that you've lost, love them too. And one day, one day you will meet them in heaven. It's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. But every time a cross comes our way, it, 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 can, it should never be, uh, it should never rattle our foundation and say, the Lord, you've obviously forgotten me. You obviously don't care. No, we, we, we don't want it. We, don't, we want to learn from, from our Old Testament brothers. As soon as there's a difficulty, let it not cause us to doubt, but let it, let it cause us to drop to our knees in trust and in prayer. Lord, you have taken care of me so far. You have taken care of everything, even the details. Look at my beautiful husband, my beautiful wife, my beautiful children. Look at the home, the food, everything that you have provided for me. You have taken care of me. You will not stop now. And so, and crosses will come our way, the brothers and sisters. They will. They will. Even as Christians, they will come our way. But they should never cause us to doubt the goodness of God. Our crosses and adversities and grief should never cause us to doubt the goodness of our Father. There was no water for the community. And they were all united against Moses and Aaron. The people challenged Moses. We would rather have died they said, as our brothers died before the Lord, why would you bring us and the whole assembly of the Lord into the wilderness only to let us die here, ourselves and our cattle? Why did you lead us out of Egypt only to bring us to this wretched place? And so the Lord speaks and works through Moses. And Moses has to do this very, very difficult uh, action where God speaks to him it says, take the branch and call the community together, you and your brother Aaron. Then in full view of them, order this rock to give you water. Okay? So you imagine now you call together the people, maybe seven, 750,000 people, and now you're the one, you're the one with the stick in your hand. Slap that rock and order it to give you water. And you've got all of the people who have been complaining, who knows for how long, maybe weeks, complaining, grumbling against you, and they're all looking right at you, and you're the one holding the stick. Do you believe? Do you trust? They're all... It's not like you can kind of just say, work away there, lads. <laughs> right? like, you know, they're all looking at you. This is the moment. Do you believe that if you slap that rock, water's going to come out of it. I mean, my heart would be in my mouth. 
My God, like the whole place. Because what, do, what if it doesn't? Now, God says it will, but yeah, what if it doesn't? What do you do? Like, you, you, you walk by faith, and it's hard. It's also, as, as a family, like you're trying to guide your family and make decisions, and you don't have full financial security, and you don't know what the full plan is, and you don't have full control over your health or anybody else's health, for that matter. So it's, it's in your hands. Is, this is now an opportunity to trust. This is an opportunity to trust rather than an opportunity to doubt. Like in every cross, it's an opportunity to trust. It should not be an opportunity to doubt. And this is up to us. This is our daily life. In our challenges and our difficulties, to respond with Jesus, I trust in you. Your track record in my life is impeccable. You have always taken care of me and you will take care of me today. And then as we're growing in, in our understanding of God as fathers, well, you know, we, we turn to God as our father. To, our, you have fathered me until this moment. And you will father me into all eternity. With you, Lord, I lack nothing. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen.